Welcome to New Money, where each week we explore the world of Chinese startups and entrepreneurs. I am Tracy Chang. Well, for internet-based service providers, connecting to an array of third-party payment platforms in a highly fragmented market is a big headache, in terms of time and labor. Now, some companies are launching the all-in-one gateway service for businesses, catering to the rising demand in this niche market. Wang Chen works for an IT firm, and like most of us, he enjoys pursuing a variety of hobbies on the weekends. Wang joined ten other people on Sunday for this woodworking course at Zhou Wu Studio. He located the workshop through an app called Let's Go, that helps people find things they are interested in and make new friends. It's on the front page. It's been recommended a lot. Let's Go offers a lot of information for different events so that we can find the things we really like. During the events, they also have staff member around to help us and take pictures. App helps connect people who are well educated and want to get out and have fun. Let's go sprouted from a WeChat account that listed activities people could do on the weekends. Startup X Monster developed the app that lists more than 30 events a week. Some of the events are exclusively designed for Let's Go users. If a person finds an event that he wants to join, he can simply reserve a spot and pay for a ticket through AliPay or TenPay. It's easy to pay for the events. I can use TenPay on WeChat. Let's Go could have offered its customers a variety of payment options, including bank cards, Union Pay, and mobile transactions. But it eventually settled on just AliPay and TenPay because of the convenience. I believe most internet startups will choose AliPay and TenPay since negotiating with banks can be tricky. Users also prefer AliPay and TenPay. If they use bank cards, they still have to type in the card number and password. While AliPay and TenPay might be easy for consumers to use, it's not simple for some companies to include the payment functions in their systems. That's because monitoring and maintaining those functions on their apps requires financial and human resources that not all startups can afford. We can get AliPay and TenPay on the app ourselves, but we need more people and resources to do it. With growing competition in China's payments market, thanks to AliPay and TenPay, and now Apple Pay, is there a one-size-fits-all solution for apps such as Let's Go? The company thinks it found its answer in Ping Plus Plus. Ping Plus Plus simply provides a cloud payment service, something known as a software development kit. Use of the kit means only a few lines of code are required to make an app's payment service live. Ping Plus Plus integrates a variety of codes into one entity that lets companies choose what payment options they want on their platforms. Ping Plus Plus can provide a unified interface that links to different payment companies. Companies that use Ping Plus Plus don't have to build bridges between all those payment companies' interfaces in their own platform. With Ping Plus Plus, they can have many different banks connected to them. Now, just a reminder: you can use your smartphone to scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen to find the latest and all previous episodes of New Money. And to begin today's discussion, Professor Jia Ning joins me in the studio. She's the deputy director at the China Business Case Center at Tsinghua University. So,、uh, tell me more about this sector,、uh, Professor Jia. Ping Plus Plus is basically a platform for a lot of third-party payment systems.、Uh, I know very little about the sector. Tell me more about it. This、uh, third-party. Payment sector has experienced actually tremendous growth、uh, over the last five to ten years, especially the last five years, and it's expected to continue to grow. You know, given the prevalence of、uh, of mobile phone users、mm-hmm. and you know these、um, these sort of internet related business.、Mm-hmm. Um, and in the early days, what's interesting is well,、um, AliPay actually dominated this market, so it was a natural extension of Alibaba's e、uh, business, right? So they're、mm-hmm. selling stuff online. They need a payment system, so they developed AliPay, but、uh, Towards 2013, 2014, actually, we started to, to see a lot more newcomers into this market because, after all, you know, this payment is a very critical component of business 
transactions. Right. So any business with a large number of users or any sort of retailers, you know, with a decent uh, user base, they want to develop their own uh, payment system. So that's why we start to see uh, WeChat payment. We start to see new Jingdong payment, mm -hmm. and even Xiaomi is now launching uh, Mi Pay, wow. right? So which is that uh, cell phone producer. Um, so it's interesting going forward. I think this market will be more scattered. Mm -hmm. So there will be several players uh, in this market. Now this is a good news from consumers' perspective, right? Because you have an alter you have you know, multiple uh, payment options and channels. But this is actually not too great of a news from uh, retailers' perspective. Right. You know, if you run a online shop. You don't want to actually deal with you know all the AliPay, WePay, and then um, Jingdong Pay and uh, <laughs> Apple Pay. Apple you know. Pay, exactly, right? <laughs> so actually, there is a natural demand for an integrated payment uh, gateway. Right? Mm -hmm. Services exactly like what uh, Ping Plus Plus is providing. Professor Jia, I see how uh, this is how Ping Plus Plus can add value to a company. But if I were a small business, how do I actually use this service? Right. So Ping Plus Plus is essentially an integrated uh, payment solution provider. Right. So it's a gateway to a number of different payment options and channels. So if you are a uh, say online uh, vendor, online business owners, instead of having to develop your own payment system or mm -hmm. dealing with you know, all different different uh, payment providers, all you need to deal with is Ping Plus Plus, mm -hmm. and Ping Plus Plus in turn will deal with you know, this variety of different uh, payment providers. Mm -hmm. right? So basically, with Ping Plus Plus, you're essentially outsourcing this payment module of your business onto a third party. Uh -huh. So basically, it saves your time, you know, saves your uh, capacity, so you can focus on your core business. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's no different from outsourcing your HR uh, unit to mm -hmm. a professional service provider right. or outsourcing your audits, your account management to uh, accounting firms. Mm -hmm. right? So the idea is very similar. And this is actually very attractive to small business, you know, right. small startups who have very few people, who have limited capacities and resources. And very little bargaining power too. <laughs> exactly, right. So with Ping Plus Plus, you, well, you don't have to worry about you know, uh, hiring IT staff to develop this very costly and uh, you know, very pricey uh, payment system. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry about maintaining accounts you're applying with you know basically establish this partnership with Alipay with uh, uh, Mi Pay or WeChat <laughs> exactly. right right that can be quite a headache for mm -hmm. small business so with Ping Plus Plus you know this is sort of a one-step shop right mm -hmm. basically it's a solution provider so Professor Jia obviously when it comes to starting a business timing is extremely important do you think Ping Plus Plus actually got into the market at the right time well, uh, I definitely agree with you, Tracy. You know, when it comes to launching a business, time is critical. It's mm -hmm. everything. So we've actually seen uh, cases, you know, failure cases where business simply just went into the market too early. You know, mm -hmm. the basic infrastructure wasn't there, the market demand wasn't there, so it was you know doomed to fail as in that sense. Right. But um, so ideally, you know, you want to be only half a step ahead of the market, mm -hmm. so you can actually take first more advantage and try to monopolize the market. So in the case of Ping Plus Plus, uh, I think the market timing is actually good because first of all, uh, the basic infrastructure is already ready. You know, with the 4G, with mobile. Uh, Internet user, you know, the right. number is increasing over time, mm -hmm. so uh, the market is ready. And also with the entrepreneurial environment, you know, there are a lot more entrepreneurial, you know, startup companies, mm -hmm. small business who actually need services. So uh, demand is there. As exactly. Well. So the mm -hmm. market demand is also there. That just right. underlines the fact how difficult it is to be an entrepreneur. You want it one step ahead of everybody, but you don't want two steps ahead of everyone else. <laughs> that, that's right. So it's definitely true. I think timing is very critical uh, when it comes to launching a new business.